gift that God has put into uh, Matt and Adeline's uh, life, uh, Thomas Matthew Grochella. And as we do, we're glad that the uh, church family is here also. And this special service that we're going to have, uh, 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 the uh, dedication service to be a part of our service, uh, this service is, a, is about uh, family, friends, church family, gathering with Matt and Adeline. And so uh, it's, a, it's a celebration that we, we've been looking forward to. And I know that we're all thankful. Matt and Adeline are here. And uh, little Tommy is here. But they're downstairs, and I think he's even getting fed at this point. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, schedules, uh, children uh, and uh, babies tend to uh, set their schedule. But we have uh, a time of, uh, of gathering right now. The scripture tells us that Jesus spoke to the disciples, and he said that when two or three gather in my name, there I am in the midst. When we come and give an invocation, we invite the presence of the Lord. As we gather in the name of Jesus, we come in faith to meet with the Lord as uh, we come into God's house. So I'd ask you to stand with me. Let us draw near in faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity we have to stand together in your house to draw near to you in faith, to look to you and to invite your presence and your blessing, your anointing upon this service. We ask that each one who comes, Lord, from the youngest to the oldest, that there would be your blessing upon, Lord, uh, families, upon relationships. Lord, as we come, we come to celebrate uh, the gift that you have given into Matt and Adeline's life. Lord, I thank you as we uh, all share in the joy that uh, they experience Lord, we look to you, Lord, for, for so much more, even to the, to the future, as uh, we look together in, uh, in faith of how you're going to be at work in, uh, in young Thomas Matthew's life. Lord, we pray for all of our lives, Lord, that we can look to you, that you would be at work in each of our hearts today, each of our lives. And we thank you for all of these blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we uh, begin our worship, you're welcome to stand or to sit or to kneel, but let's all come with the worshipful heart as we come and lift our voices to the Lord together.
Uh, he's in hospice care at this point at home. And so I know that it's, it's hard because we, we want to rejoice with those who rejoice, but we also need to be aware and uh, able to weep with those who weep. I've, I've been uh, to visit um, and to share with the family. Uh, Phil was able to recognize me and, and, uh, when I said uh, it's interesting because when I asked him if I could pray for him, he, said he had a, he was so weak, but he said, I'm sure, it's such a, uh, and that, that's something over the years as I've asked him uh, if I could pray for him, that was his response, so it just touched my heart, and, uh, but if we could just pray for him, and I'm sure that there are other needs that people are, are carrying today, um, we live in a world where there is uh, a lot of things that are happening around us, and I know a lot of people are feeling overwhelmed. And uh, certainly there are situations in our families or among our friends, uh, those that we love that we're praying for who are in serious uh, uh, needs. And so uh, I want to come and just ask you to, uh, to pray together with us. And as we do, I'm going to ask if... Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with thankful hearts, Lord. We thank you for this life that you've given that's being presented to you today, Lord. And we look forward with so much anticipation for the goodness that you have planned for his life, Lord. And we also come with, with heavy hearts, Lord, looking uh, to the situation with Phil and others, Lord, where they're at the dawning of their life, oh Lord. But Lord, I thank you that in the midst of it all, you are the same God. You care for us the same, oh Lord. You look to us, Lord, as we as we bring a child before you and as we bring Phil before you, Lord, they're, they're both your children, Lord. And all those, Lord, who are suffering are your children, Lord. We bring before them before you now, Lord. We ask that you fill life, Lord, with healing, with mercy, with grace, Lord. You fill with your goodness, O oh Lord. Lord, we thank you that in you, Lord, no matter what the situation is, we can put our trust in you and stand firm in knowing that you have our best interest in heart, O oh Lord. So we yield to you this morning, Lord. We give to you from the youngest to the oldest, and we say, Lord, you have your way, your will be done in every situation of their lives, O oh Lord. You watch over, protect, Lord. Lead and guide in your way, Lord. And Lord, for all those of us gathered here, Lord, whatever our, our, our suffering might be, whatever our pain, whatever our need, Lord, we ask that you need it, Lord. We present ourselves to you today, Lord. Lord, as, as a child needs to be, be presented by the, by the parents, Lord, we, who are of age, Lord, we present ourselves, Lord, and say, have your way in our lives, Lord. Use us for your glory, Lord. Empower us, Lord. And make us, Lord, truly your children, living to bring praise to your name. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. At this time we're going to take up our offering. If there's anybody who would like an offering envelope, you can raise your hand and the ushers will serve you with one. If we just have uh, the ushers pass some envelopes, offering envelopes, so those who have their hands raised. As we prepare to take up our offering, uh, I just want to uh, make an announcement that this Wednesday we'll have our Bible study. On Friday night at 7.30 will be our men's uh, meeting. And then the ladies on Saturday will be having their uh, prayer, uh, prayer, uh, prayer luncheon uh, at noon. So uh, those are our announcements for this week. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask the ushers uh, in the uh, we're ready to come and to pray God's blessing upon our offering. Thanks. Thank you, God. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather and present these offerings to you, we pray that they be used to expand.
video of the montage of uh, pictures and uh, that they put together for us. So we're going to show that before I invite them to come up with uh, the godparents and
In the Gospel of Mark, in chapter 10, we read a passage of scripture that I believe uh, we're familiar with. As uh, we think about the children today, uh, there was a, a time when people were bringing their children, and we'll read from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, beginning with verse 13. And they began bringing children to him, that's Jesus, so that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and said to them, Permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it at all. And he took them in his arms and began blessing them, laying his hands upon them. As the uh, parents were stirred in their hearts concerning uh, the love of, of Jesus who had come into the world as Savior, we see that they wanted their children to find blessing, to come to a, a, a rabbi or to come to a, a priest and to have a blessing as we would come to a pastor and ask uh, uh, for a blessing. The disciples felt like Jesus was too busy. After all, he was teaching, he was uh, ministering, he had so many things that he was looking uh, to accomplish concerning the Father's will and the kingdom of heaven. And felt that the children, uh, they felt that the, the parents bringing their children were more of uh, a nuisance, that there was uh, not time for that. But Jesus saw them and he became indignant. He said, Permit the children to come to me. Children are a heritage of the Lord, they're a blessing from the hand of God. And so when uh, they brought the children, he took them up in his arms. And he blessed them, so he laid it, blessed them, and he laid his hands upon them, imparting blessing to them. And so we want to come today and uh, to uh, rejoice in the gift that has been given into the arms and into the lives of Matthew and Adeline. And I'm going to invite them to come uh, with Thomas Matthew Rochelle. And I'm going to invite Cindy and Michael to come also as uh, godparents. Presenting your child to the Lord, you signify your own personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You show a desire to see God's will carried out in the life of your child. And you acknowledge your place as stewards of what really belongs to God, your son. Dedication means that by word and example you promise to teach your child to live a holy life and to value the good gifts God has given you promise to give your child every opportunity and encouragement to develop into a well-rounded Christian individual God intends him to be. Dedication before God and the church means that you realize that the church should have a large part in the spiritual growth of your family. They should know you and your child so they can give prayer, support, assist in Bible teaching, and provide opportunities, facilities, and workers through which you and your child can enter into the fullness of the Christian faith. If it is your wish to follow the example of godly parents who throughout, throughout the ages presented their children to God in dedication, if you understand that your child is a gift from God and that he will hold you accountable for your child's spiritual growth in Christ, if you promise to pray and uh, instruct your child in the things of God, to teach your child to read God's word and to do everything in your power, to bring your child to a knowledge of Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. If so, then you have a right to stand before God and the church this day in an act of dedication. Matthew and Adeline, as you have, been, as you have brought <coughs> young Thomas Matthew, you have gathered with family and friends, chosen godparents, and prepared to to gather to seek God for his blessing, his goodness, and salvation in the life of time. 
You understand as parents throughout the generations that children are the heritage of the Lord. Tommy is a gift from Almighty God into your lives. As parents, you have taken on an awesome responsibility in raising this child. As parents who have faith in Jesus Christ our Lord, you must, to the best of your ability and by, by God's grace, live out your faith. You are to be an example to Tommy, that from a young age he may know the love of God and know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. As you have come before God in the church to present this child and to dedicate his life to faith in Christ, we ask God's blessing upon him. At this time, uh, David is going to sing a song that Matt and Adeline asked him to sing for this special occasion. <coughs>
asked to be godparents to Kuriyankame. I know that the Adamana Mad in their hearts were asking you because of uh, the love that you have for each other. And I know that they also have an expectancy that you will pray for uh, Kuriyankame and that you will be also an example with them of, uh, of God's love. And so I'm going to ask you uh, a few questions, and if you would just acknowledge uh, we do, I would uh, uh, begin by saying, as the godparents of Thomas, do you acknowledge the need of every person born to be saved from sin? Do you believe Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of the living God, who died on the cross for the sins of the world? Do you believe in Jesus Christ as Savior of the world is also the Savior of your Thomas? As the godparents of Thomas Matthew, do you commit yourselves with these parents to see this child brought up in the nurture and teaching of the Lord? Do you intend to pray for Tommy to encourage him to put his faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? We talked about the responsibility of parents before the Lord and the place of being a steward of God's gift. And I ask you, Matt and Adeline, as you have come this day with baby Thomas, conscious of that awesome responsibility that is yours in raising this child, you have come to dedicate and present this child to God, our Heavenly Father. You have also come to ask God's help for this task and the church's support as you prayerfully carry it out. Do you now present this child in a solemn act of dedication for all before Almighty God? Do you promise to bring Thomas up in the nurture and the teaching of the Lord? Do you now promise to manifest to the best of your ability and by God's grace a Christ-centered style of life that will help Thomas to know the person of Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. At this time I'm going to <coughs> anoint Thomas with, with oil, representative of the Holy Spirit. But we are going to pray a blessing. And I ask you to, to pray with me as we come and uh, dedicate to young Matthew. We're going to pray for uh, young Thomas Matthew. We're going to pray for Matthew and Adeline. And also for Cindy and Michael, as they have uh, made this uh, commitment. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge you as the giver of life. We acknowledge you as the one who is uh, the lover of our soul. We ask you, Lord, to be at work, that you would just... Uh, uh, see us as we have gathered here, as you have gathered, uh, as we've gathered in your name, as your presence is with us. We ask you, Lord, for your blessing. Lord, as you reached out your hand and blessed the children, Lord, I just thank you for your blessing on Thomas and Matthew today. Lord, I thank you that you would be with young Tommy and that you would watch over him as he grows. I thank you that a young, at a young age, Lord, you would have uh, that understanding of your love for him that through his, uh, his uh, growing years that he would acknowledge you as his Lord and Savior, that he would put his faith and his trust in you. Lord, I thank you for the love that you have uh, uh, for him and for the great love that you have for Matt and Adeline. I thank you for the blessing that you have placed in their lives. And as they have come to present and dedicate Matthew, Thomas Matthew to you, Lord, I thank you that Matthew and Adeline would receive your blessing also. Give them grace and wisdom and Give them encouragement and strength as they choose uh, uh, to be good stewards of the blessing that you have uh, placed in their life. Lord, I thank you for Cindy and Michael as they have made these commitments, that again you would give them grace and that you would watch over them and give them the strength and the blessing and uh, the love in their hearts for, for young Tommy, that they would encourage him uh, through his life, that they would stand with Matthew and Adeline. And Lord, we thank you in all these things. Your great blessing. We thank you that you are Savior of the world, that you are Savior of our lives. And I just thank you for young Thomas Matthew, that he will know your love and your salvation. We place him in your hands and in your care, and we thank you for his life. In Jesus' name.
Jesus' name. David wrote many beautiful psalms, and in Psalm 139, he himself acknowledges God's uh, sovereignty. He acknowledges uh, God's God as uh, Creator and the one who has uh, uh, given life, the one who was there from the very beginning when he was in his mother's womb. And he writes in Psalm 139, beginning with verse one. O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou dost know when I sit down and when I rise up. Thou dost understand my thoughts from afar. Thou dost scrutinize my path, my lying down. Thou art intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, Thou dost know it all. Thou hast enclosed me behind and before, and laid Thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high, I cannot attain it. In verse 13 he says, For thou didst form my inward parts. You did weave me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are thy works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you, when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths uh, of the earth. Your eyes have uh, seen my unformed substance, and in thy book they were all written, the days that were ordained for me, when yet not one, one of them, there was not one of them. How precious also are thy thoughts to me, O God! 
How vast is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. David understood that from uh, the very beginning, as he was being weaved in his mother's womb, that God was not unaware, but very aware of him. That as the giver of life, that he saw God as his creator. That God is a God who uh, has created the world, but is the giver of life, the author of life, and the one who sees and uh, uh, is uh, and knows uh, uh, men and women. Jesus, uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, as he spoke about being the good shepherd, he said that, uh, I know my own. He also said of those who were his sheep, those who were his followers, that they knew him and that they understood his voice and that a stranger uh, they would not follow. God is looking for uh, us to understand and acknowledge him as our creator, but also we acknowledge that he knows us better than any. He doesn't look just on the outward appearance, but he's able to see the heart. And each one of us who are here today, as we have uh, uh, come to celebrate with Matthew and Adeline this uh, new life that's given into their hands, we recognize that God uh, has uh, given them a miracle, just as it was uh, spoken of, as we uh, prayed, as it was sung. They know that God has given into their lives uh, a great gift. For each of us, we have a gift of life from the, our Creator. And uh, God is not far from us. In another portion of this psalm, David says, Where am I to go from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down into the, into the depths of Sheol, you are there. If I go to the other end of the sea, you are there. We can't escape uh, the fact that God knows us from uh, the beginning, that God knows us where we are now, that God sees our lives, and somehow uh, when we look at this, we understand that there's no place we can go. I had a brother-in-law who used to like to hunt, and uh, he uh, would always be in camouflage. You ever, do you know anybody like that? I don't know, in our area it's not as popular, but uh, in camouflage, you're always ready to be out there hunting or fishing. And I found a, a camouflage cap that I happened to see, and it says, had a little man behind the bush that says, you can't hide from God. <laughs> I gave it to him as a gift, and he liked it. <laughs> but, uh, but that's the truth. David was saying, in the best of, of situations, you were with me. In the hardest places, you were with me. When I was trying to hide my heart from you, you saw my heart. God knows us, and he's, uh, he's concerned uh, uh, for our lives. David was one who was a shepherd. He was out in the fields. He saw the stars. And uh, I love to go camping. Some of you may have that, uh, enjoy that, or just going out on a, uh, uh, when you're on trips to be able to see the, the beautiful stars in the sky. He said, when I look at the heavens, when I look at the stars that you have made, what is man that you are mindful of him? Who is the son of man that you care for him? David was looking at this creator who created such a vast universe and such a beautiful uh, world. And yet he said, how is it that you created all of this and yet you are concerned about me? That you care about me? He knew him from the womb. Wherever David went, God knew him. And we see in this passage that finally he says to God, you search my heart. Lord, you who know my heart, you search my heart and see if there be any hurtful way in me. Any wicked way, any painful way, any way that would take me away from you. And Lord, you lead me in the everlasting way. God has a concern for us. He's created us. He's given us life. But he wants us to have a new life in Christ. He wants us to have a relationship with him and to know him. He wants us to understand that he cares for us, that he cares about us that he's concerned with the things that concern us. And I know all of us have faced hard things uh, in, in our lives and have faced places where maybe we've questioned whether God was there or whether God was concerned. I want you to know that God is concerned, that God's love doesn't fail. And we see that his love was demonstrated in such a way that he gave his own son to come into the world. That one who was, uh, uh, who was the good shepherd, that one who was... Um, who came to, uh, into the world, came to lay down his life for the sheep. He demonstrated God's love at the cross, and 
through the cross, He took upon Himself the sins of the world, but He also took away the power of sin. He took away the power of death. He took away the guilt and the fear of death so that we could have a relationship with our Father. In other words, He took every obstacle out of the way so that we could know forever that He loves us, that He's concerned for us, that the One who gave us life wants us to have new life in Christ. And as a new creation in Christ, that there would be forgiveness, that there would be a place of, uh, of uh, healing in our lives, that there would be a place of knowing Him as our Savior now, but also that through the power of His resurrection, we would have the assurance of eternal life. God is concerned with us as we're gathered here. God is concerned with us as we leave this uh, uh, celebration today. God is concerned with every aspect of our life. But we who have, uh, who have come and acknowledged the blessing of life should acknowledge the life that He has given for us in His own Son. We should come and acknowledge, like David did, how God is Lord over all, and that He's the God who knows us, the God who loves us, the God who cared so much that He gave Himself for us. And if we have that uh, assurance of His love, then we can put our trust and our hope in Him. We can have a relationship with our Heavenly Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ, and we can have the assurance of eternal life because of what Jesus has accomplished for us. How many of us are grateful for the love of God today? I know we are. And as we acknowledge that and we're reminded of that today, I'm just going to pray for God's blessing upon you. I'm going to ask the Lord to speak into all of our hearts and to encourage us in the day that we live in but as David prayed, search me, Lord, and know my heart. If there's anything in my heart that's... You've taken all the obstacles out of me, but if there's anything in my heart, maybe things that have happened in my life, maybe struggles that I'm going through, maybe temptations that are there, things that are taking me away from that place of relationship, from that place of faith. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you would, you would cleanse my heart, that you would forgive me of my sins, and that you would allow me to have that new life, and that you would lead me in the eternal way. That I would be in a place where I'm looking forward to that day, one day, when I can be with you. Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we come together today and acknowledge that you are the author of life. And as such, Lord, you have a value on us as your creation. But for those of us who have our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ as, as our Savior, as our Redeemer, as we've come to know our Heavenly Father through that love and have the work of the Holy Spirit pouring your love into our hearts, Lord, I thank you that we acknowledge that you give new life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That, Lord, we are, are yours uh, through creation, but, Lord, we want to be yours through redemption. We ask you to speak into each of our hearts, Lord, that you would allow your love to fill us, that we would see, Lord, through all of the, the things that we face, that you are there, that there's no place we go, Lord, where you are not. And that, Lord, in the, in the big picture, Lord, you care for us. Lord, that you love us that you are ready to be at work in our lives and you're able to hear and to answer. Lord, we thank you today, Lord, that uh, you would take every hardness and you would heal every wound of our hearts, that you would be the lover of our souls and that the Holy Spirit would bring healing to our spirits, that we would have uh, your love filling us and the, the assurance that we are not alone, that our Heavenly Father is with us. Give us that assure, assurance and encouragement as we renew our faith, as we come and say, yes, Lord, we want to follow you. Lord, let your blessing be upon each life represented uh, in this sanctuary today. As we gathered in your name and invited your presence, I thank you for your presence and your work to each of our hearts. And we give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, for your glory, Father. Amen. We have a, a closing song that you'll be familiar with. It's a, we would think of it as a children's song. Uh,
Jesus loves me. I know the things that I've been through in my life. I know uh, hard things that I've been through as a cancer survivor, as someone who has faced that place of life and death. You know, everything can be stripped away from us, but if we have that assurance, that simple faith, that like precious faith, that He does care, that He does love us, it gives us encouragement and helps us to take hold of Him. Let's stand together as we close our story. our Lord and the precious ministry of the Holy Spirit would be with us until we meet again. May the Lord be with each one to remember to pray for Matt and Adeline and Tommy, to pray for one another. God bless you. Go in his peace. Thank you.